Hey guys, in this video, we will look into how I made Wukong's W clone ability from League of Legends. Be sure to have watched episodes 1 to 6 and episode 9 on the MOBA character series to stay up to date with this series. In our scene, we have our player prefab here, and we did make a new script called Warrior Trickster, which is the name of Wukong's W ability from League of Legends. Um, the animator didn't really change much about it uh, except for the name, but it was just the walk and idle animation so far didn't add any attacking ability since this doesn't require any attack animation. But looking into the script, it's the same layout as the ability cooldowns and all the other um, scripts that I made for the Ezreal and Annie ability. You can see it has the image, the cooldown, the bolt is cooldown. I did add a new bolt called Ken Spawn Clone which is set to true. Um, that's pretty much the Ken attack and I also made another bolt called is uh, in invis mode which is set to false i also have a public transform called clone spawn point a public game object clone object which will be our prefab that will spawn as our clone um public game object invis canvas object and this is pretty much so when um when it goes invisible we'll just put like a little overlay on it just to make it look like um our character is invisible i also added a material change so once we press the ability, our character's material, which is the alpha underscore joints and alpha surface, really depends on the character that you have. As you can see here, it has the body two material and the first one has the body one material. Uh, in the script, we have a public material called transparent material. You just uh, change the opacity to wherever I put it. I just put down the alpha of the material. So when I place it on the object, you can see it's a bit faded yeah or transparent which is why it's called a transparent material i've got a public skin mesh renderer skin mesh body one which is what we saw the alpha underscore joints and the skin mesh renderer for the second part of the body and this will get the materials that it has now so the one being the white material on the um, player and i think the body two will be the blue if i'm correct going down to the start method we have the image fill amount set to zero, the move script equals get component movement, anim equals get component animator, the skin mesh bod one material will equal to the material it has now, which will be the white material. And then same goes for the second. We're just setting it so the game knows that this is the material that we want to start with when we play the game. And then we'll have the canvas game object set to false. Moving down to the update method, we just set the clone ability. Then we'll create a separate method called clone ability. Uh, there isn't that much that goes into this type of ability. All you have to do is just pretty much press the button and then we'll spawn prefab game object of the character. I did want to make it the old Wukong clone since the new one, you'd have to make it attack. I mean, I prefer the old Wukong ability where he just the clone just sits there. But that's personal preference. If you want me to make it attack, um, then just let me know and I'll probably make a follow-up video on this. You can see at the top here, if input they'll get key ability, which I set to just pressing one or Q or W, whatever you want. If the can spawn clone is set to true and is cooldown and set to false, is cooldown will be set to true and the fill amount will be equal to one. We'll also have the invis in invis mode set to true and we'll start the coroutine moving down here once it is in viz mode like i said i'll enable the canvas game object to make it have that fade look we'll swap the body materials that we start off with to the transparent material that i just showed you and then else um, the game object was set to, set to false after the coroutine has finished and spawned the game object which we'll get into in a moment and the cooldown which is pretty self-explanatory i've said this so many times the clone image dot fill amount minus equals one divided by the cooldown time times time dot delta time and if the clone image dot fill amount is less than equal to zero the fill amount will be equal to zero and then the cooldown is set back to false so it's not going to be on cooldown anymore so the coroutine itself i enumerate our spawn clone which i called once i press the ability button We'll have the can spawn clone equal to false and then we'll instantiate the object uh, at the clone spawn point dot transform the position and also its rotation we'll do a yield return new wait for seconds which will be the cooldown 
and then the uh, the character the player can pretty much press the ability again and spawn the character the reason why i put this in a co-routine is so that we only want to make it spawn once instead of multiple times that's why if we put it on an update you know it's going to spawn multiple even though you just press the button once so it's always good i always like having things go into co-routine if i just want to make it spawn once that's pretty much the script for the character for the prefab i, I named it here just called clone wukong i took off all the unnecessary uh, scripts like the combat the movement because this is pretty much just gonna be static unless you want me in the future to make it move or attack enemies but right now it just has a script called warrior trickster clone and when we look into that there's not much into it so we'll just get the warrior trickster script that we have over here call it wt script in the start method we'll do a wt script equals game object that find game object with tag player dot get component warrior trickster um obviously if this was multiplayer you'd have it if is local or it has authority and if it's the same team then find that player but since we're just handling with single player at the moment i just thought i'd use this for um showcase purposes and then in the update method we'll just have the coroutine once again where it just destroy the clone um after an x amount of seconds and then we'll get the in invis mode from the script and set that to false once the second is finished and it'll destroy the clone game object because in league of legends after a certain amount of time the clone disappears and the player just becomes visible again and that's another thing you can have the reason why i made it public the in invis mode so you can call it in your combat as well so if you i didn't show it in this case but in your hero combat once you attack the enemy you can you can write this particular line of code and then it will set the player back to its original materials just as long as you call the wt script in the top with the variables uh, other than that it was very simple um, ability to make it would have been slightly trickier to have the clone attack the enemy but if you do want me to do that once again just let me know um, i'll work my way around it i just wanted to do something basic since you know i haven't really uploaded i don't know why i've taken this long to upload i'll give you a quick look on how i set up the script so you can see over here i have the ego spawn point which is attached to the player i didn't want to zero out the entire position just set it back by one or like point minus point something you have the clone prefab here and the ego invis overlay which was this i already showed you and the materials you've got the transparent material the alpha joints for the skinned mesh renderer and also the body materials yeah there wasn't that much to go through on the player itself the clone prefab just had a script and the nav mesh agent and also the player animator but yeah if you have any suggestions of other character abilities from any other moba or maybe even third person or first person games uh let me know and i'll see what i can do and yeah see you all next time peace